Charles Agwan stars in Monday at 11.01 a.m., a throwback thriller to the Twilight Zone days. It's about a couple who comes to a small town and finds some really strange things that go on. A real creepy thriller. And joining me right now is the writer and the producer and star of Monday at 11.01 a.m., Charles Agron, along with his co-star, the great Lance Hendrickson. Hi, guys. Jeff, how you doing? Greetings from Las Vegas. Hey, Jeff. Wish I was there. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> I feel lucky right now. This movie is opening, and I feel like it's such a celebration, and what better place than Vegas? Hey, we'd love to have you anytime. Well, I'll tell you, the film is opening uh, uh, February 5th, and it'll be playing at the Town Center 18 in Vegas, so um, that's uh, exciting. All right, Charles, you're the writer, the producer, and the star of Monday at 11 and 1 a.m., a jack-of-all-trades. You wear all these different hats. The movie overall seems like a tribute to the great thrillers of the past. Oh, it really is. I was uh, uh, very much affected by Stephen King's The Shining in the Twilight Zone series, and uh, what really impressed me uh, about those is that... Um, uh, you know, th those, uh, uh, you know, shows and movies uh, really created uh, fear as opposed to just quick scares. And uh, as a writer, uh, those are sort of the, uh, the things you emulate and, uh, you know, hope that you can uh, achieve. So, Charles, when you're writing a script and you're developing a character, do you have a specific actor in mind? Uh, maybe like the man sitting to your left? Well, it, it certainly helps. Um, it, 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 you know, when, really though, I am a fast writer though. So when I do write, I've actually have the story. You know, it's typically already been written. You know, over the past years, sort of in my mind. So really, I, I create a blueprint, and uh, sort of uh, develop the characters from there. But uh, 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 Lance Henriksen and the bartender uh, really were, were a match made in heaven. So uh, you know, I, I appreciate uh, everything he brought to the picture. I think something's wrong with me. Have a seat, son. All the people here that you've dealt with, they're moving souls along. And your mind can't make any sense of it anymore. It's all becoming a blur. And all you feel is longing. Okay, Lance, you play a bartender in Monday at 11.01 a.m. You're not just an ordinary bartender. Was there something unique that attracted you to the part? Well, you know, that, that's like saying uh, the guy's a cowboy. There's so many possibilities there. Bartenders are, are you know, uh, they're almost like, a, uh, it's, it's so strange to have the job as a bartender, but this guy has a lot more going on than just serving drinks. And so a drink is like an entrance into a conversation. Would you like a drink? Would you like some white wine or, you know, whatever? And, that, and that's just an open door. Suddenly you open the door with that. And now, now you're into another realm. I mean, you suddenly, the character that he wrote and the issues that he wrote were so, were so strong and focused that I just had to put the music around it and, 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 ha and, and uh, you know, get, go where I have to go. It's so hard to not talk about the specifics of this movie because you don't want to do a spoiler but I got to tell you that that the writing and the detail of this was so actable S things to really act act you know <laughs> that, that that I had nothing but a great time working with Charles I mean it and we, we it, things would take off on their own because he created the structure for it. All right, Lance, since Charles is the writer, the producer, and the star, do you come to him with ideas on the set since, you know, maybe it's like, hey, this is a better idea, or maybe can we change this dialogue, or, you know, do you micromanage? No, no, you don't do that. You don't want to spoil it. You, really what you do is try it. You just try it, you know, surprise him with it, or try it, or, or say, I have an idea, let's just do another take. Right. I mean, it sure. will become to keep it alive, to keep it alive. It's not about negotiating everything and pulling us. I don't want to pull him into being the writer when I have when we have to do a scene together. We're now acting. So you don't want to do that to somebody. And I think it would be better off to just try it. <laughs> and surprises are good things. He surprised well, me. I mean, I, you know. 
All right, so Charles, Harvey Lowry is the director of Monday at 11.01 a.m. And like I said before, I keep coming back to this. You're the jack of all trades. You're the writer, the producer, and the star. Do you have a hands-on session with him, or do you kind of like, uh, you can't micromanage, can you? How do you, how do you treat yourself on the set with the director? Oh, really, you, you can't micromanage, because um, once I'm on the other side of the camera, uh, uh, you, I really have to let it go. And so, um, you know, really in dealing with Harvey, um, you know, it was about preparation before, uh, making sure our visions matched and that we kind of create the blueprint to kind of get us to where we need to be. But um, when I'm on the other side of the camera and uh, performing, um, I mean, really, um, it may seem like that that is the easiest aspect, but that to me is probably the hardest because, um, you know, I have so much going on in my head uh, trying to, to create the character and, uh, and do what I'm supposed to do. So re really, uh, Harvey and I uh, got along great, and, um, but uh, uh, his job was his job uh, to do, and uh, my job was to, to perform the best I could. So tell me about finding the small town, the setting for Monday at 11 to 1 a.m. I, I, you know, it seems like the script called for a very specific look and a specific feel. Well, I'll tell you, the, going into Guthrie, Oklahoma was, um, I mean, it really is a trip because um, it's yeah. this beautiful cowboy town that's kept in, uh, you know, perfect condition. And uh, uh, really, it's, it's so unusual that I feel like it became a character of the film all on its own. All right, Lance, by the time the filming was done with Monday at 11.01 a.m., how good of a bartender were you? What's your favorite drink? I think my favorite thing to do is open a bottle of wine. <laughs> no. No, you know what I mean? It's the, it, it depended on what moment we were working on. There, was, there are so many moments in this. My favorite thing, really, the power that the bartender has is all the girls like bartenders. No, it doesn't matter what you look like, who you are, they're all, they all like you. So There is a glut of beautiful women here this time of year. And none of the men around here dress like you. You've attracted the attention of one of the locals. So Charles, being the producer on the film, and your movie is going on a digital format platform, also being released theatrically at the same time. So are you a filmmaker that supports that dual release, digital and theatrical at the same time? Well, to, to tell you the truth, not only do I support it, I've actually created my own distribution arm, uh, K Street Pictures. And so what we're going to do is, is try to take uh, the way we get uh, uh, product and films uh, to the marketplace is with a whole, uh, a whole different uh, paradigm. So, uh, uh, so this is uh, 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 a way of delivering the film that I think is uh, able to get to uh, uh, many people. So if people want to experience it in the theaters or if people want to uh, experience it uh, you know, at, at home, I, I would rather get, um, get the project, the, the film that we're so very proud of, uh, out there in two people as opposed to um, kind of creating these, 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 uh, these barriers uh, and, and expectations that I think are not, uh, you know, for the current marketplace. All right, guys, Monday at 11.01 a.m. Tell everyone in Las Vegas to go check it out for me. Everybody, come check out uh, Monday at 11.01 a.m. Uh, in theaters February 5th. And Lance, real quick, I am such a huge fan of yours since Dog Day Afternoon to Aliens. I'm just so thrilled to talk to you today. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Yeah, we're loving it. All right, guys, good luck with the film, and I'll see you in Vegas. Have a good day. See you in Vegas. All right, so check out Monday at 11.01 a.m. in theaters now and available on digital platform, too. So you can stream it at home or go out and do it the old-fashioned way. Welcome to the 21st century. All right, for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. Check out my podcast on iTunes. And if you like what you see, please subscribe, comment below, and give me a thumbs up. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard. I'll see you next time.